Good morning and welcome to the Boeing University studio from the International Boeing Campus in Arlington, Texas. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Bednar and I'll be your host for this episode of the Boeing University Tuesday Morning Profit Break. The Tuesday Morning Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce costs and enrich yourself and your team and your business. We have another great show to share with you today. Welcome to our new viewers and welcome back to those joining us again. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. So grab your coffee or your favorite morning beverage and let's get started improving your profitability. Today we have with us Danny Gruning. Danny has more than 13 years experience in the entertainment industry. He started his career at a standalone laser tag facility before heading to Disney World where he received some of the best customer service training available. He has helped operators all over the country with attractions mix, hiring and training, operations best practices and more. Danny, thank you for joining us here and sharing with our audience. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You, you, we just shared just before we went on the air that, you, that that's something I didn't know that you've never had a job outside this industry. Yeah, essentially that's right. You know, you'd mentioned my very first job that I ever had was uh, 15 years old at a standalone laser tag facility. I did that through high school and part of college, and then uh, in college I had a couple you know, odd jobs here and there that I did. But then after college, it was down to Disney World to do that training. And then afterwards, I was back here on the vendor side of the industry, helping educate people and grow their businesses. So it's uh, it's one of those things where like a lot of people in this industry, I kind of fell into it accidentally. And ever since then, I haven't wanted to leave. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, let's get started here. Uh, I got one question that, that they've kind of really caught my attention uh, was that why is it important for operators to understand uh, who they should target? Absolutely. So in the bowling industry, as we all know, bowling is an extremely inclusive activity, an extremely inclusive sport, if you will. People of any age, whether they're four or five years old, up to those who are 103 years old, anywhere in between, they're able to participate in this uh, in this game and in this attraction. And that can lead a lot of people and business owners just to say, well, who is my target audience? My target audience is, is everybody. But when you say your target audience is everybody, it's really hard to be able to to speak to your specific customer. I like to recommend to people that they have a primary and a secondary demographic. And when you can define that, you can position your packages, your promotions, your messaging, your positioning, all of that specifically geared to your exact target audience. And it's a lot easier to get people in the door to be able to have more fun, have more experiences, and then you know, in the end, generate more revenue. Well, when you talked about your demographics, we have an interesting situation in our industry. We have a very wide age range. Mm -hmm. Are there more generations or less generations or specific generations we should be, should be targeting? Right now, it basically breaks down to four. So I'm going to start with the youngest and kind of go older from there. So the youngest generation, Gen Z, some people call them the iGen. These are the kids that are in junior high, high school, college, kind of that um, teenager to mid-20s sort of range. Um, this group is very uh, tech savvy. They love technology. They spend more than 10 hours a day on a digital device. 70% uh, of this group watches at least two hours a day of YouTube, which if any of you have kids or employees, you know they're attached to their phones at all times. It's a part of their body. They can't let it go. Um, they're also very uh, diverse and secure in, in their, their passions and their interests. They're less likely to be judged by their peers, even if some of their interests are maybe a little bit different. And so they're, they're a very diverse group um, and very technology driven. And then moving up, you have the next group, the millennials. Now, it's important to kind of talk about the difference between Gen Z and millennials, because oftentimes a lot of people just lump all young people together and just call them millennials. But there are distinct distinctions between them. At the moment, if you're running a center, I would imagine a lot of your employees are probably in that high school and college age, so you have a lot of Gen Z employees. Moving up from there, you've got millennials. Now, they also love technology, but a couple distinctions uh, between them and Gen Z is, number one, they value value experiences over everything else. They love experiences over physical things. Um, they're also very health focused. A lot of things that we see right now on, around health and wellness and um, physical activity, exercise, uh, good eating, so much of that comes from the millennial generation and the kinds of things that they're really focused on. Um, moving up and the millennial generation, they're like mid-20s to mid-30s, late-30s, somewhere in that range. There's never a really 
hard distinct cutoff between generations is a little bit gray between them. Then from there, you've got Gen X. That's kind of your uh, late 30s, early 40s, up to mid 50s. Now, what's interesting is that the Gen Xers are the parents of Gen Z. And so anytime that you have high schoolers and middle school kids that you're trying to target, what's interesting is because um, they're the children of Gen Xers, the Gen X demographic, they really love spending money on their kids. And so not only does Gen Z have a lot of this disposable income they have combined, it's like $140 billion in buying power, but they influence family spending far more than any other generation ever has. Because Gen, uh, the Gen X parents will always be talking to the kids. They'll be asking them questions about how the family spends money. And so the kids have a huge amount of influence. And so if you want to target and go after those middle school and high school kids for birthday parties or whatever the case may be, it's important to get buy-in from the parents as well and from both sides, because that can really um, help produce a lot of great results for, for um, uh, business owners. And then the last group being the uh, baby boomers, which is in that mid-50s to mid-70s range. And they're, of all the, the generations we've talked about, the wealthiest. They have over um, ha half a trillion dollars in buying power, and they really love spending money on um, experiences and leisure activities and vacation and things like that. And they also like spending time with their family and their grandkids and their kids. And so those are kind of the, the four main generations that we look at. There is an up and coming one of Generation Alpha. Those are the kids that are newborns up to about 10 years old right now. And for most facilities, they're not yet a factor in the way that they're gonna make attraction decisions or package decisions or anything like that. But when we look down the line at the next five to 10 years, it'll be interesting to see as they grow up and their millennial parents start raising them, kind of the things that become important to them and how we want to get buy-in from the kids and the parents as well. Uh, when you started talking Gen X, boy, you described me to a T. I have a, uh, what do you call it, the iGen, the, the Gen Z, uh, my, myself, and boy, the way we include them, everything you described, you literally described me. That was, that's kind of scary. Uh, but, and then you, my parents are boomers, so I understand these two, and I kind of get millennials, but I have to admit, I'm, 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 that, that middle group, that excuse me, it's middle, I get the I because I have my own, but that millennial, you had mentioned briefly the experience and the health benefits, the difference between, can you elaborate a little bit difference between that, that because you said most people like to lump them together. Mm -hmm. Can you break those apart a little bit a little bit more for us? Can you help? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a really important distinction. Just lumping everyone in one category, just calling all the millennials. And, and a lot of times it can be the joke of, oh, those millennials and they're doing this and that's really annoying. But it, it's, I think it's really important to understand the distinction between the two. So one with Gen Z, uh, they're a, a, a younger group. And they also, they're kind of the inverse of millennials where Gen Z, they really like products and things more than experiences. Now that doesn't mean they don't enjoy going into entertainment venues and spending money, but it's interesting how you think about the way that they wanna interact with the world and the way they wanna interact with their experiences. And it's a lot about digital stuff and things, um, especially because they're spending so much time on their devices. You think about your phone. I mean, even me, I have my phone on me at all times anywhere I go, but it's a little bit different for this younger generation. It's attached to them and it's a part of their identity. They love that kind of, physical piece. But then you look at a little bit of the inverse of that in millennials and they value experiences. And I, I myself am a millennial. I'm on a little bit on the older side of the millennial generation, but I very much value experiences. You know, I, I don't really care about buying a lot of clothes or a car or a ton of technology, those sorts of things, but I love traveling. I love trying new foods. I love doing these experiences, um, visiting new places. I value spending money on things that are unique unique and novel to me. And that's why I think it's interesting if you can set up your entertainment venue, even if you have a lot of more traditional attractions, finding ways to engage millennials and give them an experience because it's, it's more than just installing an attraction saying, here you go. But if you can take things to the next level and really deliver, deliver an experience, you'll be able to engage them in a whole new way. Well, now you hit on something. Now, like, like you, I'm at the high end of the Gen Xers, um, practically a boomer. And, and so uh, when my kid said, hey, boomer, he's, well, he's half right. So now you hit on something about these different attractions for 
the different gener generations, what attractions make sense for the different generations? So that's uh, an interesting question and almost a, a loaded question in a way because uh, the, the briefest version of the answer is it depends. And the reason why I say that is there are a lot of attractions that can be set up and positioned in different ways for different kinds of markets. For example, you think about something like laser tag. For a lot of bowling operators, laser tag is one of the first attractions they may add if they start diversifying their attractions to go beyond just traditional bowling and arcade to add more pieces. But even in uh, laser tag itself, you can set that up to be, okay, well maybe we have a bit more of a, a theme that's uh, almost cartoony in a way that we can really gear toward the younger kids and we can really focus entirely on birthday parties and that's what we want to do and that works great. But at the same time, you can have that same kind of an attraction completely flip the theme and maybe do something a bit more adult oriented. Maybe it's something like a, a war torn city and you've got like helicopters busting out of the wall and jets in the ceiling and all these different kinds of things that call back to a lot of common video games like Call of Duty that people might play. And that can work well with kids, but also works very well with some of the um, adult millennials and Gen Xers who uh, maybe want to have um, a night away with some friends and go hang out. Or maybe they're part of a corporate group or a larger group that wants to come in and have an experience like that. So when you look at attractions, there are multiple ways to, to position it. It's This is why it goes back to understanding who you want to target and who you want to go after, because that will inform your decisions on how you want to position your attractions. Wow, you circled all the way back to where we started when you started talking about demographics. Um, that, was, that was pretty cool. Uh, I wish we had time for more questions, because uh, we uh, only have a limited time on the show. We'll have to bring you back sometime in the future. Uh, we really do thank you for taking some time uh, with us, with our audience, and, and helping them understand a little bit how generations not only can affect their business, but what they're going to decide to do next with their business. So thank you, uh, Danny, for taking some time out of your business ske schedule and, and spending some time actually in studio this morning with us uh, at our new studio here at the International Bowling Campus. If you would like more information about Danny or uh, learn anything about him, you can contact, contact him directly at thewowaffect.com. As we wrap up another edition of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break, remember when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next week at 1015 Eastern for another episode of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. If you have any questions about today's show or would like additional information, you can reach us at any time at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. Until then, I'm Kelly Bednar, and do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. See you next week.